Hey everybody, welcome back. Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac after birth. Plus, keeping it a little mellow. The baby is next to me. Say hello, baby. She hiccuped a little bit. You might have heard the hiccup. It, it's always a little touchy when you got the baby. Sometimes she loves to hear the commentary. What a classic run today. Some, I, I, I think there's something about, like, you know, when you're an infant. 9-J-R-G-S-K-H-P. Um, when you're an infant... Nothing soothes you like the sound of your your parents' own voices. We do want to play that, but I think we're gonna give it a minute. I think I think we gotta make sure we have like a little bit of a moat first, an ability to have some extra HP, um, or to, or to make our own maybe if we get the opportunity. I mean, you never know, right? Normally, I probably wouldn't fight the boss so early here either, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Okay, almost hit the space bar. <laughs> that would have been a funny joke. Um, but I think we're gonna do it anyway. The reasoning is very simple. Oh my. We might- oh, that was such a good bomb. <laughs> we might have the means to get, uh, two rerolls if we play our cards right, if we need to reroll this first one. Okay, hold it. This is, like, really, really, really nice. S see what you get. We got something I'd consider pretty great. We are going to pick up both Spirit Hearts. Normally we wouldn't, but here we're going to pick up both Spirit Hearts. Um, we're not going to pick up that HP first, because both Spirit Hearts allows us to sneak in here. No, I'm so stupid. Get something out of this. Certainly, you know, let's be a little conservative here. I think one Potato Peeler is, like, is kind of the sweet spot. And then a free Guppy item, also beautiful. I mean, this is, this is really, really good. I'm sure. You, oh God! Don't get stuck in the fire. Stepping in it for okay, okay. Not. Let's just relax. You know, maybe got a little too big for our britches there. But yeah, I was saying. I think that you know the baby typically, you know, she seems to. Who would have thought, right? But she seems to like it when uh, her parents talk to her, which is probably not the way she's gonna feel when she's a teenager. But that's okay. That's a long way away. We don't need to. We don't need to face that. Uh, that situation just yet. We probably, I mean, especially in this situation. I mean, come on. We want to place a bomb. We're getting a bunch of money. Even if we can't get the Tinted Rock, the money gives us a chance at an arcade next floor, which is super good. This is very nice. Don't talk to me, Dad. I'm going to the dance with Darren. His dad's a, oh no. <laughs> His dad's a a Bitcoin billionaire. All you are is a stinky streamer. Oh, c sweetie, come on, don't say that. I'm a pioneer in the industry. People didn't even really know that you could, you know, monetize what I'm doing when they first started it. They were just doing it for the love of the game. It wasn't until later that the cynicism, uh, you know, crashed into the entire industry like an enormous wave. There was purity in it at the start. There was beauty. Man yells at Cloud. Um, there was also a lot of unregistered hypercam too, but... I would like to purchase, uh, like it's expensive for sure, but I would like to spend a key and I would like to buy a bomb. No bombs exist, so I will instead just purchase that, which I think, you know, it's about as good as a bomb on average. And then get me out of here. This is like a, an insanely good first floor. Certainly we got nothing wrong with this first floor. An arcade would really tie this run together right now, but like, okay, you know, you don't need to take that kind of damage necessarily. We did get a damage upgrade on the first floor as well, which is super nice, but... So, you know, you can't ask for much more out of, out of one floor than we got there. How am I doing? Thank you for asking. It's a... I'm doing well. It's a Tuesday. Um... Been up for a while. Baby had not a rough night at all, but, but kind of a shorter night than than average, so, you know, a little sleepy, but you just roll with it. It's not like, I mean, on the average day, the average person probably feels a little bit sleepy. <laughs> so I think that it's, uh, you know, it's less of like, a, oh, life is hard and more of like a, see, I'm, it's solidarity, you know? Um, that's very nice. Right. Uh, why do I do this to myself with the... Don't even use the fly, man. The fly is like this. That's for later in the game. In the early game here, you can use your scalpel. 
use that cube of meat. Like, I really feel like my brain is trying to, like, sum the... It, it's trying to come up with a vector that's between where our cube of meat will hit and where our fly will hit. It's summing their positions and trying to figure out where we should walk. Not a good idea. It is summing the vectors! Okay, that's... That's all I got. Um... I think we're good though. Like, I, it's a little early um, to be saying something as ridiculous as this, but I, I really, and I, I invite the comedic timing, you know? I invite the hubris, I invite all of that. Um, I really don't see a world here in which we don't, you know, win this run. We kind of have almost everything, at least in place, that you need moving forward. Now, these are both trash, um, but that's pretty good. Succubus is pretty good. I think we will probably also try to reroll HP. Really looking for a tiers upgrade would, would really bring the whole uh, bring the whole place together. Um, before we get our next reroll, because we're not going to get two rerolls here unless we buy another one from the shop. I think it makes the most sense to see what we've got going on in our item room. I was hoping we might have like an arcade as well, but no big deal. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have anything else to say. It's been a good uh, week so far. Still st uh, settling into the new uh, streaming schedule, but everything's going well. Feeling a little bit more accomplished in the world of chess than I have been recently, which is nice. Uh, w went through... That's not bad. Went through a heck of a slump, and now... Uh, let's not say coming out the other side yet, but, but doing a little bit better. Feeling a little bit more focused. Just in general, good good things are uh, are happening. Wait, I should have gone back for this. So wait, hold on. That's a that's a luck upgrade and a range upgrade. Luck does scale. Tough love. Range is kind of irrelevant, but it's not. I guess honestly, this might seem a little funky. This might seem a little bit funkier than you're used to. I'm gonna take Dad's lost coin. And the whole point of it is very simple. It's exclusively a luck play. Now that we have tough love, I think luck is... I, I'm, it's worth taking, let me put it that way. I don't necessarily think it's its going to scale our damage all that much right now until we get like a lot more luck. Oh, hey, baby. She's like, why are you not bouncing me? It's because you don't understand, but the way that daddy's computer is set up here in order to be able to bounce the baby Bjorn while also sitting in my computer chair, I have to torque my knee at like a, a 35 degree yaw, which seems like it's really bad for the... <laughs> I mean, it hurts like a little bit over time, but also I feel like it's one of those things that's more likely to lead to like debilitating injury in the future. And she's like, oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I was too busy not being bounced. A baby is a is a selfish creature. Even the nicest baby, I think, is a little bit selfish. And I, I it might sound like a that's a mean thing to say, but I actually think that it's like it, it's like a great survival mechanism, you know. For that's so good right there. Um, for for a baby, you know, it, a, a polite baby is not going to get fed as much as it would probably want to. Now, you should not extrapolate that, I think, as an adult. You know, you you got much different parameters for your life. You shouldn't be like, well, if it worked that way as a baby, why, do, why don't I just do that now as an adult? Okay, why don't you start crapping your pants and then, you know, see how many callbacks you get from your job interviews. I'm going to guess that unless the job was CEO of crap in your pants, you're probably going to end up with, uh, you have no new voicemails. You like that one, baby? That was a good one. She's like, yeah, plus you can't be the CEO because I'm already the CEO. She's absolutely right. She is. <laughs> oh, she loves it. Anyway. You know, you get, you get different parameters, obviously, as an adult. Don't think that's... I mean, it, it should be readily apparent. Let's put it that way. Um, I, You know... Just because we got all these pills here, I'll try them. I'll try them on for size. They're obviously, you know, all going to be pretty much a waste of our time now, but it's the thought that counts. And so we might as well take them. I mean, like, is that what you want? Is that what you want, Ed? Do you want me to sit in there and take all those inert pills over and over? Because I'll do it. 
Apparently, in the, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I took it a little too far. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, I forgive you. <laughs> All right. Like I said, very low chance of a loss on this one, which is, is good. Uh, I'm excited for Gex today. Gex, if you're not familiar. I'm going to use, like, a lot of opportunities, by the way, to promote the fact that uh, I'm doing a more Twitch-focused schedule lately. Um, so, like... It, you might say why you've talked about it in literally every piece of media uh, that you've done over the past like you know month or so. I know the ba even the baby's like that's true. It is true, but you would be surprised. One thing that I, that I've learned on the internet, um, and it, it takes, and it's not even a negative thing at all, um, but it's just one of those things you got to keep an eye on. Dan, Dan was like a big uh, influence for me in this department. But, you know, he says he, he doesn't shy away, unless it, like, detracts from the content. He doesn't shy away from answering a question he's answered before because, you know, not everybody sees every piece of media. And that's true, but I think there's that one extra part there, which is that, like, people, despite not watching every piece of media, also, for some reason, feel compelled or... And this is where it comes across uh, what I'm saying is a little negative, I'll admit, but... <laughs> it's just how I phrase things, I guess. It's a bad habit. But despite not, you know, watching any of the content sometimes, you will still encounter people who are like, Hey, I haven't watched the show in like five years, but I was just wondering like why there's no Spelunky video today? And you're like, why do you... Like, I don't, I don't mean like, why do you care? Like, I, I do appreciate it. But there are times where I'm like, you know, you haven't watched in like two years. What, you, you, you really don't have like... Uh, I mean, I get that you're just curious, but... You know, hey, you know, I, have a, I don't watch the Spelunky videos, but there wasn't one today. Is everything okay? It's like, it's not a negative thing necessarily, even though I don't necessarily believe that the concern is genuine, but maybe that's more of like an organic flaw in my own brain, um, to believe that anybody caring is somehow doing so maliciously. Baby. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the main reason I'm going to keep promoting it. You, there's people that are like... Like, I was stunned there was a post on the subreddit. So first off, you're like, you're following the subreddit. Because you're a fan of the content. Um, and then secondarily, they like they made a post that was like, why is there so much Twitch content lately? And I was like, well, if you watch like literally any video in Spelunky or Isaac that I've recorded over like the past month. <laughs> I've talked about why and, you know, anyway. But yeah, um, this is where we're getting a little bit sidetracked here. It's a, just suffice it to say, I'm no longer going to apologize for repeating myself because I, I guess the thing is that like people, you know, Isaac, I understand they fall asleep, you know, seven minutes into the episode, so I guess I can't be too mad about that. Sleeping men tell no tales and leave no comments. Just take this marbles. Um, you know, could be could be worse. Starting to feel, like, I wouldn't say pinched, okay? Like, I, I think we're still in a great spot. Um, we're not going to worry too much about our shop on this one. But what we're really looking for is uh, is a little bit of HP. And honestly, like, a little bit of speed would really hit the spot right now. But yeah, so I'm, I'm live five hours a day except for Saturday. So, Sunday to Friday. 11 a.m. Pacific to 4 p.m. Pacific. Wouldn't that be weird if there were different time zones? I'm gonna do it. That's a great bit. I'll be I'll be live 11 to 2 11 a.m. Pacific to 2 p.m. Eastern right baby. You, you can't do the math yet, but that's literally the same time um, I know She's like you're not bouncing me. I am bouncing you. It's just my knee feels like it's gonna it's gonna shear off <laughs> Um but yeah, so I mean, like I'm, I'm promoting Gex a little bit. I'm promoting the stream a little bit. You should come watch the stream if you want to, you know, get that hot content delivered like a Krispy Kreme donut. You know, you, you want it when the sign is hot. You can also eat it when the, you know, you, you've taken it for takeout or whatever. But there's nothing like uh, when it, when the sugar is still warm, right? But uh, Gex is another thing. People go like, what the heck is Gex? It's the Golden Egg Challenge series. It's fair to say, I think that Daniel and I, we're still figuring it out, right? We're, st we're still trying to figure out, um, like, what we want it to be. 
Is it is it a spiritual successor to the podcast we used to run called Check the Wire, where we talk about like the inside baseball of the industry and stuff like that? Honestly, the, a few episodes have been like that, but I I actually don't think that's the strength. You know, I think the strength of the show is more. You know, we we both pretty good entertainers, I think. So I think having the ability to, uh, <laughs> to have an opportunity to banter with one another would be nice, baby. Hold on. We'll probably fight this boss, and then we'll we'll do a little baby uh, baby troubleshooting. I think that is the baby's hungry cry, which unfortunately means I I cannot help you. That's that's outside of my domain, baby. Oh, two guppy items though. Okay, I'm gonna put it on pause. I'll be back in just a minute. Hey everybody, we are back. Baby is good, and we're good to leave, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? Why, yeah, I mean, we, it's tempting to go to the, you gotta balance your, your, your lust for danger with your lust for life, right? Like, I don't, I don't wanna go to the curse room, take damage, have it not be a guppy item, even if it is a guppy item, you know, you're rolling mom's knife, of course, I'd love to have guppy regardless, but, um, yeah, I think we're ready to go here. We're, we're just getting warmed up. This might even be like a two Isaac day. We'll see. I know I've made this joke many times before. I'm like enamored with it. I can't believe it's 9.45 a.m. And by the way, I know I said I got up early and you're like 9.45. That's not early. You got a weird perception of what life is like with a newborn. You don't wake up, feed the baby in 35 seconds, start going to work. It's a whole, you got mega poop diapers. You, you gotta, you know, warm up the bottle, feed the baby the bottle, burp the baby, make sure the baby's asleep. All of a sudden, you know, you, you, you try to get up and go to the kitchen and get yourself a cup of coffee. You hit your, your knee on the corner of the dining room table. You don't think it's going to make any noise. Uh, you don't think it's going to wake the baby up because she sleeps so well most of the time. All of a sudden, she starts to stir, and then she goes, and then, you know, she calms down, and you're like, oh, that was a close one. And, it, you, you know, pretty much like rinse and repeat that balancing act for, I don't know, two to three hours. But anyway, um, it's 9.45 a.m., and, like, this baby's got me hungry for lunch. It's crazy. Like, I ate lunch at uh, 10.30 yesterday. I mean, partly it's because I have, you know, this streaming schedule where, like, I, I stream through lunch. I stream, like, 11 to 4. I could take an hour long. Well, not an hour. I could take, like, 10 minutes to eat lunch in the middle of the day. An hour is a little ridiculous. Um, not, not if you work in the corporate world. Then it's, like, a, a much-needed, like, reprieve from the politics of the office, right? Um, but, uh... You know, I could take 10 minutes out of my stream to eat lunch, but it's not even so much like a like an economic decision. Like, yeah, to some extent, you might lose some viewership when you eat lunch. But, you know, I, I think most sane people... Oh, you freaking... Okay, I'm stupid. I forgot that this was the floor where we can't um, leave unless we somehow miraculously get a teleport card. Jeez, I sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Let's re-roll that. We were fishing for Guppy and did not get it. Mind is... Or, sorry, the body is kind of tempting, but I, I still think we're fine here. That was kind of a whiff on my part, but... Um, but, yeah, the... Oh, Tomo, now you want to leave, too? It's getting a little crazy, buddy. That's like... Like, I just, I just left, like, a less than three minutes ago. Anyway. Um... But then, like, my stream is almost like, it's like an inversion of what happens on the typical stream. I'm not even being satirical. I bet, and I, I don't think this is just thanks to a contingent of weirdos out there. But I bet if I s tweeted, I'm eating lunch right now on stream, that stream would have more concurrent viewers than me playing Rocket League. For sure. <laughs> Now, I don't really play Rocket League, uh, you know, when I play it for the viewership. I play it because it's a nice little easy co-op segment. You know, most people kind of understand what's going on in the game. Um, you, you don't have to explain the rules every two seconds, and, you know, it, it's free to play. So there's a you know wide group of uh, collaborators that you can work with. 
But I'm just saying, I, I feel like the lunch might actually be like a... It might actually be a leader for me in that performative category. Um, but it's more, it's less that and more just like... Like, if I'm only gonna stream for five hours, which is still, like, on the shorter side... Um, I, I would rather have that five hours be, like, all gas. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think you could do an eight-hour stream and have it all be gas. Literally 100%. At least, I, I think you could do it for a while. I don't think you could do it consistently. Um, like, I, I, I watch uh, some streams now, especially when I'm up earlier in the morning. Um, and Dan is, like, honestly, one of the most active entertainers on the platform. I know this is, like, a, an episode where I, I guess we're just saying nice things about my friend. But, um... He really does give 100% of his effort, and even then, there's moments that are not gas. Especially when he's playing Tarkov, you know? You're in the queue for, like, you know, five minutes just to get onto the map. I think we should just take it. Survivability is more important than anything else right now. And he's trying to spin, like, for, for so long, but when you're in, like, minute eight of, of possibly 15 on a queue for Woods... You know, sometimes you're just gonna be like, alright, I'm just gonna go to the bathroom, enjoy the clips. <laughs> It happens, right? But I would rather it, like, if we're doing five hours... I mean, let me put it this way. I'm hungry by the time I finish my stream, for sure. But there is no, uh... Thermodynamic reason that you absolutely have to eat every five hours. Like, on average, sure. You probably do eat more than once every five hours. You know, if you factor in, like, snacks and... You know, I mean, when it, most people probably eat breakfast at like 7, they eat lunch at like noon, they eat dinner at maybe like 6, and then, you know, maybe a little little something-something before bed and the occasional snack in between. But you, if with proper planning and a little bit of stoicism, you, you don't have to eat every five hours. That's, uh, that's a, a quality problem to have, let's put it that way. But, but as a result, you know, when you're live 11 to 4, is like, when are you going to eat lunch? You can't really fit it in exactly at 11, because, like, some of these lunches that we're, that we're getting from the service are, like, you know, um, fried rice, which is delicious and, and probably my favorite of all the meals, to be honest. Um, but it's not the kind of thing, like, some of them are, like, wraps. You can eat a wrap in, like, you know, two or three minutes, maybe. Um... But fried rice, like, especially when it comes out piping hot, you're not gonna just shove that into your, into your gaping maw, you know? You're gonna end up burning your tongue, then you burn your tongue, you get, like, a mouth ulcer, you get a mouth ulcer, it's, it's painful, you go oof, oof, owie, it's, it's a whole thing, right? So, yeah, I, I've, I've gotten over it, like, here's your two choices, and I'm not complaining, you know, it's, it's, it's my choice, and to be honest, I, I, I don't mind a little lunch-type food at, uh, you know, 10.30 in the morning. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I, I've never been against. I, I've I've long said that I, uh, I I think. Oh, Tomo would like to come back in. All right, Tomo. Hey, buddy. Hey, dude. There you go. I've long said that. Uh, I think breakfast for dinner is not. Let's not say bad, but overrated. You know. Is is breakfast for dinner good? Yeah. I would say dinner for dinner is better, but you, you know, variety can be the spice of life in some situations. Um, so I understand the purpose of it. Um, but lunch for breakfast? If only someone would come up with some kind of name for it. <laughs> well, that's not really brunch. The, w the way I look at brunch is that brunch is like you're sacrificing two meals instead of one in order to make in order to justify eating a meal that's probably a little bit more unhealthy for you like what what do i think of when i think of breakfast oh you know like two scrambled eggs maybe a little bit of like a slice of toast and chili in a bowl <laughs> sorry the always anytime i describe uh, breakfast foods i always got to slip into tom waits Night Hawks at the diner. You know, she did for the ladder. But, um. But yeah, anyway, Tom waits. Um. Tom waits for no man. <laughs> Doesn't even really make any sense. Um. There's a, there's a Tom Waits quote, it's very famous. It's, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me 
than a frontal lobotomy, which is a very, very clever piece of wordplay. But I may also add a false dilemma. You can have both. If you, you could have a bottle in front of you and a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> or you could have neither. You, you know. You know, I'd, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. That's kind of a given. You know, I'd also rather have like a million dollars than get kicked in the throat by a horse. But that, you know, we, we could just maybe have, have either, you know, one or, or neither or you get the idea. Anyway, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, no! <laughs> it's the worst possible item to get with mom's knife and actually like it's really bad I thought it was gonna be like maybe a little bad but no that's that's genuinely not good it genuinely puts our chances into a little bit of uh, they're questionable I should have taken care of you but in my defense I kind of thought you would be dead by then and then also oh dude this is like really actually bad Succubus has been made so much worse. I mean, this this room is pretty... Pretty... I'm thankful for it. Yeah, and then I took damage anyway because I was trying to use my orbital? Like... Explain yourself. You know... Every, every time I think I'm out of playing the game in a boring way, the game pulls me back in by doing something like that. I mean, what do you expect? Like, you want to get the credit for taking the question marks and being like Mr. Zany? Oh, that's pretty nice, actually. But you don't actually want to suffer the, the potential consequences? That's not how it works. That being said, well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Anyway, long story short, the, what's the gist of this episode? Babies are selfish, which is fine. It's what you sign up for. Kind of selfish to have a baby. And then, well, in the first place, yes. <laughs> but then also to be like, you know, ah, this baby's not giving me that much free time, you know? Like, yeah, what'd you expect? And then secondarily, I've been eating a lot of 10.30 lunches. It is a little weird. Like, I don't know, what am I going to have for lunch today at 10.30? Trying to think. There's there's a uh, a beef and green bean stir fry. There is a Penang curry, which is basically just a vessel for coconut milk. Um, maybe not traditionally to that extent, but these are like heavily coconutted, which I'm very much down with. Um, there's roast chicken and mash. That's one where I'm like, I don't know if I can handle... I, like, rice and some some protein and some vegetables, I can eat that at 10.30. Roast chicken and mash might put me to sleep. But anyway, make your vote in the comments below. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We made it through regardless. And if you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!